Hey guys, we're going to be doing some shadows today. I'm going to try to make this a relatively fast tutorial, but we're going to go through um, all the things that you can do with shadows and some special tips and tricks. A lot of you have methods before, so um, hopefully you can jump through the, the timestamps in the video if you want to go check out something specific. But a couple of things that we're going to do here, we're actually going to start by going through Krager's shadow and light pack. He's done a great job of giving us a bunch of tools to work with just to kind of walk through them. The very first one we get to are in the pattern shape tool. By the way, we're using a map of mine that I've been working on. These are elements of a modular city that I've published. So uh, we're going to work on some of those pieces today. So what I like about this tool, this is the 25% opacity. Then there's a 50%. And then there's a 75% and even 100%, which I'm not sure why you'd use that, but it exists. And why these are helpful is not just because, and I use these all the time to make drop shadows and other things, but they're helpful also because if I bring up my path tool and I find my medium path, which I happen to be on, and let me make this none. It's nice because it makes no transition between this medium path and this medium floor piece. So you can take a shadow and stretch it across any um, amount of space. And you guys have seen me do this in, in like the frigate or the, uh, the tavern maps where you've seen me um, manipulate spaces to look really light or really dark using that tool. Um, other things that you've got in the path tool, you people ask, there's so many paths in here. Honestly, I don't use most of them. I just use, for the most part, the medium shadow path. I use it because at one, it's a pretty good path for just laying down under walls, for example. Here's me laying this path down to make these castle walls separate from the ground below them. Uh, but you can also make it really small, and this is good if you're making things like curbs, and you can make it really large, which helps you make you know really dramatic rooms and, and manipulate your lighting in your rooms really easily. So the medium shadow path is, is where it's at, and you won't go wrong with it. If you'll notice here, let me select those paths and delete them. Actually, let me show you a trick while I'm doing that. Let's say you have a path and it's buried and you can't get to it. You can go to your path tool, edit points. And when you're editing points, you can actually just find the paths. You can drag it out to where you can actually get to it. And you can either, either make some changes or delete it or change stuff over here and then move it right back to where it was just using the edit points. But let's go back to that medium path tool. Let me set my width to one. And I'm going to lay these paths down. And then I've got this like leftover corner here. So what am I going to do with that? Well, if I tried to round my path around it, I get this hedgehog effect, which I don't like at all. So now that I've made a clean line on both sides, I'm going to go to my object tools. And in my Krager shadow pack, I have all these options. And there's a ton of really good stuff in here that I use all the time. Mostly, I use these circles up here to make drop shadows. I'll go under an object like this, and I'll paint some drop shadows. I'll take off Snap to Grid so I have more control. And essentially, you're just painting in a drop shadow. It gives you a lot more control than any other tools that Dungeon Draft has. And now I've made a nice drop shadow there. But what I'm looking for is my corner piece. And they're hard to see. It just is what it is. It's the nature of the, the preview tool. So I've got quarter circle medium, and I'm going to set its scale to one, the same scale as my path. I'm going to turn off my grid. I'm going to zoom in really close. And if I get it just right, I can make a completely seamless connection. That's what this is for, and that's how you use it. You've got to pay attention to your scales, one and one, and then you've got to 
turn off snap. Well, let's see. I'll turn off. Oh, I'm sorry. If you get your scales right, you can turn snap to grid on and it does automatically make it flush for you. So that's how you use these two tools together. You'll also notice that there's colorable paths. Um, I don't know that those are helpful for shadows, but they're helpful for lots of other things. Like this, for example, I've got my opacity set to 50% alpha. And, and I've just got some random color. I think it's white. But all of a sudden, I can essentially paint. I can, you know, make, make the terrain look different. I can change the color around a little bit more. Let's do um, something slightly reddish. And you can create just some really fascinating effects with it. So imagine you're working on a swamp or something and you have the ability to lay these down. It's just really, really cool. And it gives you a ton of control over the, you know, surface that you're dealing with. Now I want to show you that paths actually work with the spline. So here I've got these crenels and I want to put a shadow um, between the crenels and the floor to help separate it. So I've got my medium path, I've got no transitions. Maybe I should have a transition. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do it for this one. Let's try this. So I'm going to turn my grid back on so I can see it. And I'm going to start in this weird place. I'm not starting underneath a, a wall. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these two points until they match. And it's going to give me this nice curve. I'm working at a 45 degree, and that's why it gives me such a nice curve. And you'll notice there's no hedgehogging or anything like that. And for some reason, it does that. If you use the spline tool, it helps you avoid that effect. Here, I've got my sides lined up again, still snapping the grid. And I'm maintaining this nice curve. And now I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go all the way in a circle, because I'll show you why. I'm going to end it there, and then I'm going to start a new one. Do the same thing. Use my shift tool. Before I click, we'll create this pink line. Once it's pink, that means your spline's engaged. And now I'm going to end it there. Okay, so why did I do that? Well, now if I go to edit points, you notice I have a great curve. If I started my, my curve here, for example, end it here, it's actually not going to give me a perfect curve. You can see it's, it's not going to follow this wall exactly right because it's not actually following a 45 degree angle. So by following a 45 degree angle, I can create a perfect curve and then I can just back off by deleting points. So I'm pressing the delete key over each one of these points. It turns green and you press the delete key. This lets you make the curves that you want without, um, you know, without having to compromise on anything. So I love that it does that. We're going to use the same technique down here. What I'm trying to do is identify where my curves are. This one I'll just draw completely in a circle. And the way Dungeon Draft works is if you do draw a path that connects with itself, it will connect it. So all I did was just left click and it connected that path for me. Now what I want to do is create a drop shadow. So I'm going to grab this piece of floor. It looks like this. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to click somewhere over here. I'm going to hit Control V, paste. And you see, where did my shirt, my floor go? For some reason, it comes way out here. Whenever you're pasting floor pieces, I don't know why, they'll often show up in this nether world out here. And unless you're careful, so you'll show you that again. Control V. If I just click here, it's lost. Oh, it could be lost forever unless you can go out and find it again. So come back here and let's change this from this floor to the 50% opacity. I'm going to turn off snap to grid so I can place it exactly where I want. I'm going to put it down to level 100 and I think that's about the right spot. And then I don't want any shadow to come into this gray area, this transparent area, because when I export, it'll look odd. So I'm going to try to grab my shadow and tuck it in just so it's on top of another material. That way it'll come out looking like this instead of it, it kind of uh, t 
takes a strange opacity when you export it. But that's a really basic drop shadow. And then of course you can manipulate drop shadows from there if you feel like you want to. Just by editing the points, you can kind of move them around. So let me show you some other things and some examples of how I've used these, uh, these items. Here we've got two roofs. These are roofs that are going on arrow towers that are going to be going on these castle walls. And what I did was I used, if I can grab it, I created just a polygon. So I went into my pattern shape tool, created a polygon, grabbed my, I think it's 50%, and I just drew and kind of followed the lines. And I drew what you see down below. And that essentially just lets me show that the sun falling on the correct side. Here I did the same thing, but I used different uh, tools. So here I just I turned on snap to grid and I just followed the, the design here, but I used 75% capacity and then I used 50% and then I used 25% and of course zero here. And then that effect, of course, is that it looks like the sun is really hitting this this roof from this side and then it's progressively getting darker as the sun goes around. And there's even a flag. Um, this is actually an asset that you can uh, use with Forgotten Adventures to show uh, the shadow under the flag. Here is an alternative to the city walls. These are fort walls. Just want to point out some of the things that I've done here. Here again is that drop shadow that I made with the polygon. I also used a really great path in Krager's pack. It's the double path. I'll drag it out here so you can see it. Instead of having shadows on only one side and then an edge, it's got the gradient on both sides. And this is super effective for showing the shadows of beams and things that would cast a narrow shadow. And you can see it's just a handful of these you know, casting shadows should really be like, probably like that, because theoretically that's what's doing that. Um, but it gives you a really, really nice effect. So like here, for example, this would normally just be a few, a few shapes, but when you add the shadows, it clearly tells you that there's, this is a, you know, a wood railing and a relatively light fence that the sun is passing through. Um, here it is again, with the shadows falling on this um, this wood wall here. And I think it looks really, really outstanding. Another trick I wanted to show you. So here we have just some walls and then we've got a piece of floor. And what we wanna do is turn these walls into archways. So if I go to my path tool and I get my 50% path, and I get to above 700 and I turn off snap to grid. And I've just got it set to one right now, but you can change this. Well, now that gives me a rounded look, the light hits it in the way that it would hit a, an archway and it works with any kind of flat surface. You can also go to fade on both sides. I'm gonna make this one a little bit longer just to show you what that looks like. But if you fade, it gives you this nice little light, like as if the light's hitting this side of the block. So that's actually an effective and proper way for the light to hit the archway. And now I've, I've essentially rounded that archway as well. I'm gonna back this off a little bit. If you round it too much, it won't look rounded anymore. And we'll do the same thing here. You probably want that a little bit more actually. That looks really nice. What you need to do when you're using a piece of floor because it doesn't already come, you see this dark line around all these assets. You can recreate that using the wibbly wobbly line. Set it to around one. Oh, and you do have to take your fading off.
And a wibbly wobbly line just builds in slight imperfections. So that's not a hard line and it ends up looking better to the eye. So this looks like something I kind of pulled out of the, of the asset uh, pack, but it's something I just created by myself, obviously. And we'll do the same thing for this one. Keep doing that. It's just an easy way to make archways anywhere you want that look really nice at any size or scale that you want. It's just a very effective tool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and you learned something. Um, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've seen these techniques, but you have to dig pretty far to get to them. So I'll try to start to do some videos that are just focused on certain techniques like this. If you'd like to see more of these, or if you have questions about anything that I did or other types of shadow techniques that you've learned along the way, by all means, mention them in the comments. Thanks so much. Enjoy your map making.